I am back with a new video. You can click below to find links in my shopping page to most of what I talk about in my videos. There are also links at the bottom to my presence on other platforms as well as to the page where we organize rides in and around New York City. This video is going to be about the Brompton brand and specifically where Brompton has been going wrong for the last decade or so. Brompton was originally founded by this guy, Andrew Ritchie, who is a Cambridge engineering graduate and definitely a top shelf talent, perhaps not on par with Alex Moulton or the other greats of the 20th century, Enzo Ferrari, Henry Ford, Ferdinand Porsche, those kind of people, but he definitely did change the way people view cycling in general. The current most typical steel frame Brompton design that we all know and love or at least appreciate is the work of Andrew Ritchie and it took him several decades to iron out the problems and to arrive at the kind of refined design that is the hallmark of the current Brompton. Unfortunately, Andrew relinquished a good part of his control of the company in the early 2000s and a new person, another engineer, came on who is now the CEO of the company. The new CEO is a man named Will Butler Adams. This man is also an engineer but not from Cambridge or Oxford. He went to Newcastle, a much less recognized university, and he appears to be an aggressive careerist and social climber. He joined the company at a much lower level in the early 2000s and quite rapidly rose to the ranks and uh, eventually bought a significant portion of the shares as well. Whatever has happened to the Brompton brand in the last 15 years or so is largely his work. I've never met uh, Will in person. He sometimes comes to New York, New York City, but I've never met him. The person I met is his main employee, uh, basically the head of everything that happens in New York and pretty much North America as well. This man's name is uh, Peter, Peter. Yeah, I'm not going to work here anymore anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Mike. Whatever the last name is, my brief involvement with the Brompton management in New York had been underwhelming to say the least. But let me go into detail about what specifically I do not like about the product, especially ever since Butler Adams took over. The first big change he made that, that uh, immediately registered on my radar was the introduction of specified Brompton Junction stores, uh, pretty much along the example of the Apple Store system. If you went into any of the neighborhood bike shops in New York City, say 20 years ago, they were all full of Bromptons. Often people wouldn't even know what the Brompton brand meant, but they would just ask for a folding bike, and the ultimate folding bike, of course, was the Brompton. What Adams did was he cut all connections with these dealers that really made the Brompton brand famous. Uh, the reason Brompton is so well known among the folding bikes is not because the company ever spent so much money on advertising or marketing, but because the bike used to be sold in practically every decent neighborhood store in big cities. And this is something that was completely ended with the introduction of the junction, even though some dealers might still be selling the bike, most of them pulled them from the inventory 
because they cannot compete with the junction and because they do not receive stock the same way, support the same way as the junction store does. By backstabbing the local dealers, what the company has achieved is that most of them no longer carry the brand, the mechanics no longer care for it. If you have a problem with your Brompton, there are not many places where you can take it. You can take it to the Brompton Junction, but the quality of the service in, in those shops has also declined because the main goal of the Brompton Junction store is just to sell merchandise. Once you have bought what you have bought, they really have at best mediocre service for it. In addition to backstabbing all the dealers that used to support the Brompton brand, the company has also brought to market a number of products which in my opinion were in many ways badly needed but have been poorly executed. The first one is the electric Brompton. I built my electrified Brompton on a standard steel frame back in 2017. Back then the electric Brompton was not yet sold, at least not in the US. And the, co the company was clearly behind the market because the market was shifting toward electric at least two years prior. So they took an awful lot of time developing this product. And yet what came out at the end was nothing more but a fairly pedestrian copying of what third party kit makers had been doing for at least a decade. You have a bag, you have a battery and a controller in, in the bag and you have a motor in the front wheel that's connected to the bag via a number of, of wires. What most people were, expen were expecting from Brompton after years of uh, supposed research and development was at the minimum something really lightweight and compact that fits entirely into the wheel. That was never achieved. The electric kit has no regeneration so those of us who have electric regeneration electronic braking simply won't go back i mean this is such an essential and and wonderful feature anybody who has had it wants to have it going forward from now on and it's really a poor way of of engineering a product to exclude such an important feature from it another problem with the product is it is speed logged at 15 miles an hour, which would be pretty slow even by European standards. Even most of the European countries allow 45 kilometers or 28 miles per hour for a high speed class of bike. There is no high speed version available. You cannot easily modify or flip a switch on this kit and, and change things so you could go faster with it. The 15 mile per hour speed limit and the fact that it suddenly switches off the this electric support at 15 is actually a dangerous thing to do. Another problem is what are you supposed to do if you already had a standard Brompton? You cannot add this kit to it. It looks like a kit, but it's not sold as a kit. So they want you to pay $4,000, which is overpriced in my opinion, to buy an electrified Brompton, which is just a steel frame Brompton with a kit attached, but it is attached in a way that is very difficult to remove. You can remove the bag and you can buy a standard front wheel and uh, I guess then you can use the bike without the bag, but they change the way the bag is attached to the frame. So you cannot use a standard bag without a battery in it to weigh it down and, and just uh, use the bike as, as a regular uh, vehicle. If you have a standard Brompton and you bought the kit, then you can remove that kit anytime you want. You can travel with it if you want no electricity and, and reduce the weight of it. It only takes a few minutes. You can switch back to the original front wheel that the bike came with and that's all there is to it. You don't get that with this electric or electrified Brompton. 
you have a kit that's pretty much permanent in the frame, not easy to switch out. Then there is the most recently introduced ultralight titanium model of the, of the Brompton. Nobody is opposed to the idea of Brompton getting into the ultralight market. It's a very small, possibly growing market that is a very interesting one and a lot of people could use a very lightweight bicycle, especially commuters, people who live in walk-up apartments and, and so on. The Brompton uh, used to have, and may probably, I don't know if they still have it, but they used to have a partially titanium Brompton. The classic design looks entirely like the steel frame, but the extremities were made of titanium. That could have been taken as a basis of this bike, and they could have just swapped out the, the main tube for something that's either fully titanium or carbon fiber or whatever to make it lighter. Instead, they decided to break the original aesthetic of the bike and put in a front fork that just it's a modern looking straight fork that does not go with the rest of the bike it just doesn't the Brompton has a t traditionally curvy kind of understated softly elegant classic design from the 70s if you want to change it you might as well change the whole thing just to change this this front fork and put in the carbon makes little sense to have a stem under the saddle that is made of pure carbon fiber when carbon fiber is very fragile and if it breaks it breaks creating sharp edges if this stem breaks on under you you're gonna be impaled on on the stem it's not a safe thing to look at. And then overall the componentry. If this is going to be a high-end ultralight bicycle that costs $6,000, then why put plastic mud guards onto it? Why not go all the way and provide the kind of carbon fiber mud guards, which I also have and which many people have purchased from third-party com companies? to make it look elegant, classy, and even lighter. And then there is the drivetrain. If this is going to be an ultra-fast bike, it should be made available with the 60-tooth chainring, which I also purchased from a third-party manufacturer. None of these things are available. The gearing of the bicycle is really not as fast as the engineering of the frame uh, would suggest. This is a bike that you should be able to pedal at 30 miles an hour, except that you don't cannot do it because there, <laughs> the drivetrain just isn't there. The chain wheel is not big enough. So there are all kinds of uh, arguments as to why this execution just hasn't worked out. It's not that the idea is bad, it is that the execution is, has been poorly done. There are, in fact, higher quality old titanium Brompton clones typically made in the Far East that are better quality, do not break the original design aesthetics, and just better value for the money, in my opinion. I have seen at least one in the U.S., and I was very satisfied both with the quality and the lightness of it. What Brompton, uh, the Brompton company has done is their patent for the foldable design of the original bike expired. Most patents expire after 20 years. Uh, what they did was they went to the court and filed a complaint under the argument that the original design is protected by copyright. Now copyright laws were designed for a book that you wrote, a painting that you painted, a movie that you did. I've never heard of it being applied for an industrial product, especially one that already had patent protection for several decades. But apparently a British court ruled that they do have copyright protection, in which case the creator of the design, um, Andrew Ritchie, would have this protection 
until the end of his life and at least four decades after that. This makes it very difficult to market and sell these clone bikes and to my knowledge they are only made in the Far East. I think you might be able to buy them straight off of the web. I don't think the Brompton company can do much about it. A dealer operating in the US selling these may have an issue, but if you are just a private person, I'm, I don't think there is any problem buying it off the, the internet. These bikes have shown up on eBay, on Alibaba, a bunch of different places, so you should have no trouble selecting one that you like. I can't guarantee that they are all of high quality, however. So there isn't a clear new brand replacing the Brompton and you are certainly taking a risk unless you go there to shop in person or you know somebody who lives in the Far East and in the country where this bike is made and uh, he can help you out. Finally, I would like to say a few words about Kinetics. I have uh, reviewed some of their products in the past. Kinetics is simply a very small shop in Scotland. They have produced absolutely astonishing upgrades for the Brompton platform. They have extremities that can take the role of hub, Shimano hubs, hydraulic disc brakes, even uh, a belt drive system for the Brompton, which still does none of these upgrades change the fold. The fold and the rolling, the shopping bag, shopping cart, conversion, all of those things function just as they did with the original design. And if you send them a, a Brompton frame, they will actually install everything if you want the, the frame repainted in a different color or want to add some kind of a treatment, they will do that also. It's absolutely astonishing what they have achieved. You can you can put uh, bigger tires, you can put the Big Apple from Schwalbe uh, two inches wide. All of that stuff fits and they will install it for you if you don't want to do it yourself. So this is a shop highly recommended and these are innovations which the Brompton company should have paid attention to. Instead, what did they do? To my knowledge, they have limited or canceled the license of the shop to sell Brompton bikes. So it's actually, if you go to their website, they actually recommend that you buy a bike from Brompton and send it to them, sort of like AMG used to function. You, you would buy a Mercedes and you would send it to AMG and they would tune it and modify it for you except that Daimler-Benz got smart, they took note, and they bought AMG. That's what Brompton should have done. They should have bought the shop, they should have appointed this guy as the top-level director. I would prefer to have him as CEO of the company instead of Butler and uh, or Butler Adams. But this is not what happened. What they are doing is they are ignoring all of these innovations which they could easily, easily do by themselves and they are trying to limit these outside companies from having any influence on the Brompton scene whatsoever. So because of this reason, uh, the Brompton is no longer a bike I would recommend whether you are looking for foldability, compactness, or something to, to travel with or to do touring with, there are simply better products on the market. So this is it for the current video and I'll be back with the next one soon enough.